Now we're going to look at what this actually looks like in code. We have four different places where we have to write code to specify the setup and breakdown of the stack frame. Uh, we're going to do that here before we call the procedure with JAL. Then we're going to do it at the beginning of the procedure itself. At the end of the procedure, we're going to put the stack frame away again. And then after the JAL in our main caller. So at the, the there's going to be code here for the caller. We're going to proceed through, do some stuff, call the JAL. Then there's going to be code after that to sort of do something with the results of our subroutine. So let's walk through this, each of these places, and we're going to draw out the stack frame as it is appearing as we go. <clears throat> so first of all, this um, main program is going to put an argument onto the stack as well as some space for return values. So let's draw out sort of the beginning of our stack here. And let's say it sort of looks like this. Uh, this is, again, just memory. And maybe the frame pointer is down here somewhere, uh, a bunch of stuff has happened, and then the stack pointer <clears throat> is pointing somewhere right there. Okay, so that's the stack as it stands. And then what we're going to do is, so this is just setting up some data that we're going to send to the stack, the procedure in T1, and we're going to put that value onto the stack. So we're actually going to put two slots into the stack by subtracting eight from the stack. Uh, so the stack pointer now is here. So there's one slot and there's two slots. And in the, <clears throat> let's see. And then we're going to store at stack pointer plus four, we're going to store T1. So this is going to be an argument, stack pointer plus four. This is going to be an argument to the procedure. Then we're going to jump and link, and that's not going to change the stack at all. All that's going to do is store the return address in the return address register, and then put a new value into the program counter. That new value of the program counter is going to point to the first instruction of the procedure. The, this code now is going to be used to set up the stack frame for this procedure. <clears throat> so we're going to do a few things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to store the old value of the stack frame pointer. Right? The frame pointer, again, points to a static location on the stack uh, that allows us to make reference to parts of the stack that have already been stored. So the stack pointer is always at the top. The, the frame pointer is in a static location but we need a new frame pointer because we're starting a new procedure. But if we just make a frame pointer, we would end up erasing the old value of the frame pointer. So before we do that, we're going to store the current value of the frame pointer, this value here, and we're going to store that right here. So we're going to store that with stack pointer minus four. Here's the stack pointer. Here's the stack pointer minus four. So stack pointer minus four is there. Then, now that the frame pointer has been stored, we're going to make the, make the frame pointer point to the current value of the stack pointer. Why do we do that? Because that's a, that's a good, reasonable location, right? The, the value of the stack pointer when we first enter the stack is a great place to start, and then everything can be relative to that. This is why we have to store the frame pointer with, uh, with stack pointer minus 4, because we don't want to change the value of the stack pointer until we've saved it, in the frame pointer and then also use the frame pointer for a local reference. So now we the add immediate frame pointer stack pointer zero is a way of just moving the frame pointer into the moving the stack pointer in a, a copy of it into the frame pointer. Now we're going to allocate a bunch more space because we're going to need some space on the stack to do things like store re, uh, registers and make space for local variables and a bunch of other stuff. So in this case for this example uh, we're going to store the return address. So first of all, we're going to make some space. Stack pointer minus 12. So this is stack pointer minus 4. This is stack pointer minus 8. This is stack pointer minus 12. Right there. Now, we're going to store the return address at the new stack pointer plus 4. <clears throat> we store the return address so that if we want to call another procedure, JAL won't wipe out our previous return address. We store our return address, and now we've got, as an example, um, we're going to also store S0. We do that 
in, in this case, maybe we need to use S0 for some reason. We ran out of registers. We want to store any registers that we might need that are uh, that need to be stored. <laughs> so we look at our register file and we say which registers uh, might we need to preserve. So if we were using any argument registers, we'd use we'd preserve those in the stack at this point. In this case, we're using for some reason a saved register, uh, and so we need to preserve that so that if we mess with it, we don't lose its value. And we have to preserve the frame pointer, which we just did, and the return address. So all of those things that we say we need to preserve are now on the stack, and we can carry on. And so our procedure then goes through and does whatever it's supposed to do. If we want to access the argument that was sent to us <clears throat> from the caller, we do that relative to the frame pointer. So the frame pointer is here. Frame pointer plus four is going to be the location of T1. And so that's the way we do this. Our procedure carries on and we do whatever we need to do. We've finished, say, for example, our operations. Somewhere along the line, we're going to want to store our return address in this space that we used, that we that we produced to, to make space for the return address before we even called the procedure. So let's do that. We're going to make space, well, we're going to make use of this space by putting uh, whatever value we calculated into frame pointer plus zero. In this case, frame pointer plus zero is going to be the value in T1, which is uh, our local T1, which is a return address, uh, sorry, return value. And so that is going to be information that's accessible by us below the frame pointer, but also by the caller after we're done above its frame pointer. And we'll see how that works. So we're going to put a return value uh, onto the stack. And now we're going to unpack the stack doing everything we did in reverse order. So we're going to retrieve any of the registers that we uh, we made use of, right? So we're going to retrieve S0 and put it back where it came from. We're going to retrieve the return address and put it back where it came from. We're going to put the stack pointer back where it came from, not by subtracting 12, or I guess adding 12, but by making it equal to the frame pointer. The reason we do this is that the frame pointer has not been touched during this procedure. And so it's a nice, easy shorthand to say, even if anything else weird happened uh, to the stack pointer during our procedure, if we just put it back where the frame pointer is now, we know that it's back where it started at the beginning of the procedure. So now we're going to put the stack pointer back at the frame pointer here. Then we're going to um, store, after we've put the, the stack pointer back, we're going to put the frame pointer, um, and we're going to put that, uh, yeah, we're going to re retrieve that frame pointer, take that frame pointer, and put it back in the frame pointer register. And that uh, will actually be sitting right here. So that's putting that back here. And now we've put everything back where it came from. And now we can just JRRA, which will get us back to the original calling code. So this is the code we used to begin with before we called the procedure. Now that we're back from the procedure, we're going to do a couple more things. Uh, we're going to retrieve the return address, which the procedure put onto the stack. We're going to retrieve that, and then we're going to put the stack pointer back here by, by adding 8. Remember, stack frame <laughs> grows towards smaller addresses, so to uh, get rid of stuff on the stack, we're going to add to the stack pointer. So that's the entire procedure. Um, just as an example, the things that are going to be consistent in this are going to be things like the return address and the frame pointer. The other things like the uh, arguments, return values, saved registers, these, those might change depending on which procedure we're going to use, but every procedure should include frame pointer and return address stuff. Because if you don't put that in and you go back and change your code to call another subroutine, then you're going to wipe out your return address and nothing's going to work properly. Just as a reminder then, um, you use the frame pointer to access information on the stack in the context of a procedure. Uh, that's because it's static for that procedure call, for the scope of that procedure, or for the stack frame that it's in. The stack pointer can change, but the frame pointer is the same. And that means that we can actually hard code offsets from the frame pointer for anything that's in the stack frame, ours or the stack frame of the one who called us. 
right? So I'll just, um, let me get rid of this for a second here. Uh, and you can see here that any arguments and return values for the caller is gonna be frame pointer plus something. And any local variables or local storage is gonna be frame pointer minus something. So frame pointer above the frame pointer is our frame, below the frame pointer is the frame of the caller or the procedure who called us, but that's where our arguments are gonna live and that's where our return values are gonna be put. You don't have to use a stack frame. Uh, but it's really good practice because uh, as a convention, it means that everybody is going to do it the same way. And when you write code in a high level language, this is what gets generated in order to call procedures back and forth. In MIPS, if you don't use, let me turn my camera back on again. In MIPS, if you don't use a lot of arguments or return values, if you use fewer than four arguments, fewer than two return values, and you know you will never call another procedure, if, if you're guaranteed that this is a terminal procedure, then you can just use the shorthand register um, passing procedure that we looked at at the beginning and what you did in the labs. Anything other than that should use the stack frame procedure, and of course you'll need it for the final exam. Stack frames can look different from program to program. They can look different from machine to machine. This is one version of a stack frame. The only version we're gonna learn um, but it's important to know that this is the amount of memory that gets taken up every time you run a procedure call. And so if you're doing um, recursive procedure calls, you might get many of these stacked one above the other, and it's easy to run out of stack space and, and make a stack overflow uh, from that context. But in general, uh, this is the procedure call process, uh, and it gives you an idea of how the information gets packed back and forth from your procedure to the procedure that you're calling, and then back again.